Well, I am back here at the log cabin parking spot, so I'm getting ready to hike in there. On this trip, um, I have some trail maintenance to do. There's just a lot of crumbs and logs laying over my trail from the loggers, so I'm gonna get some of that cleaned up because hunting season starts in about four or five days. Um, so I want it to be easy to walk in for my, for my dad, for Sierra, and whoever else wants to come up here. Um, so I wanna get those crumbs cleaned up. And then I also have this wood stove to install um, from Northwoods Fabrication. So I'm gonna swap out that wood stove I have in there for this one. And there's just, yeah, a lot of brush work to do around there and then um, finish up that canvas ceiling inside the cabin. So um, plenty to do. And I just kind of want to get things a little more dialed in here before hunting season this weekend. And I also have a kitty to bring, bring back in there as well. It's still there, it's still standing. No windows are broken. Life is good. First thing I'm going to do after I bring the cat in here and get her all situated is uh, check that trail camera since we had a little activity on it last time. It's always it's always fun coming up and seeing what's on there. I'm going to guess nothing, but you never know. All right, let's have a look. Nothing on there. Keep that off until I leave, otherwise there'll be a million pictures of me and Skeeter. I bet this fall we'll get a moose again and possibly a bear. Maybe that pine marten too again. All right, well, the sun is setting. It's getting dark fast, so I think I'm just gonna hang out, do a little reading, a little writing in the journal, keep these uh, pets entertained and get up bright and early in the morning and get after it. So I will see you guys in the morning. What's up, dude? Okay, well, I think right away this morning, after some coffee, I'm gonna work on my trail, get that uh, dialed in first, then carry back that wood stove, get that installed. It was kind of chilly this morning. <clears throat> I mean, I was warm overnight in my sleeping bag, but once I got out of it and started moving around, it was a little chilly this morning, so tomorrow morning I might end up firing up the stove, just because there's no sense being being chilly when I got firewood and a wood stove, so might uh, fire that up just to take the edge off a little bit. But the trail is priority number one, and I got to make sure it's perfect. You know, every little stick and everything's got to be moved out of the way um, because with Sierra, Sierra's knee, you know, even just the tiniest stick is hard for her to lift her her leg over. So it's got to be pretty much perfect. Well, I'm making my way back to the car. I'm gonna grab my chainsaw and then just start carving my way back to the cabin. Shouldn't take too long. There's some parts of the trail, I mean like this. This is just getting, I'm just gonna knock this stuff down. So that won't take much, but there's some spots where there's a lot of stuff laying over the trail and then they uh, made a corduroy road in a low spot. Um, so I'm going to move all those because those are kind of a pain to walk over. Because they're done back here, they don't have anything else to grab this way. So all this stuff is just going to be here forever. So nice thing is, I guess, is that I got a lot of dry firewood around now.
Okay, let's get the party started. All right, decent start. My vehicle's up there. So I moved all this stuff out of the way, but here's that corduroy road part. It goes for probably, I don't know, 40 yards maybe. So this is kind of the, the most challenging part, the most time consuming part. So um, I'm gonna bang this out, get this out of the way, and then the rest of it should go fairly quick. Okay, well, the corduroy road is pretty much removed. It took a little bit. I didn't realize there was like, you know, there were four or five high, so it was a lot of stuff to move. But the beauty of it is, is this is all dry, dry firewood. So this winter, I can just zip over here and throw them in the sled with the snowmobile and sled them right to the cabin. But that's good. That was kind of the bulk of the work. So there's just a little bit of crumbs here and there to re remove now. A little bit of chainsawing. But I'm going to head back to the cabin right now and have some lunch, check on the kitty. I'm going to bring the uh, car battery out here and charge it up. It's kind of a nice sunny day. Well, I'm just about done with the trail. There's still some sticks I'm gonna move out of the way, but I'll just throw those out of the way every time I hike to the car with an empty load. And little by little, this will be, we'll get it right down to the dirt. But I just have um, this last little section here before the wood line. And um, I have a nice clear cut trail from the wood line to the cabin. So it's just this last little bit. <laughs> The trail is done, so I'm gonna bring the chainsaw back to the vehicle. Um, it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow. They're actually talking about flash floods and that sort of thing. It's not gonna be an issue here where the cabin is at, but the road in, there's a few creeks that could be problematic. Um, there's actually water over the road already, so I don't know, I might have to get going somewhat early tomorrow. We'll, we'll just see how hard it's raining. But anyways, I'm going to bring this stuff back to my vehicle and then grab that wood stove and install it. So this stove, the legs uh, come off and, you, you know, they fit right inside the stove. So it collapses really nice for easy transport. And I was sitting here trying to decide if I want to collapse it and put it in my green bag and carry it back. But it's light enough where I think I'm just going to just carry it back. Yeah, I definitely wish I knew about these stoves before I rolled these other two units back here. Uh, that one's quite a bit lighter. Um, but yeah, all I gotta do here is just unscrew this pipe, slide this one out of the way. Um, you can see this stove's a little bit shorter than this one. But I'm, sw I'm making the stove swap because 
You just can't beat these uh, steel plated stoves. They, they don't they don't even make them like that anymore. Like you can't buy these in a box store um, that I've found anyways. Um, th these are kind of those newer wood stoves. They're they're a little more efficient on wood, but they don't throw anywhere near uh, the heat that uh, a steel plate stove like this does. And it's kind of important, like when I come back here, if I'm out in a boat, um, like out on the trail or something and come back in here, um, this stove will heat up the cabin in no time. It just throws off heat immediately. As soon as you start a fire in there, this thing's heating up and throwing out heat. Where this one takes quite a bit of time before it actually warms up and starts throwing heat out into the cabin. So uh, with this thing, I can it, it, it'll be comfortable in here in about 15, 20 minutes when I come back to a, a totally froze up cabin. Um, anyways, I'm going to get this out of the way and um, slide the new one underneath. Yeah, I know people are going to comment, because they always do, about what, like I don't have metal behind the stove or a heat shield or anything. I meet the clearances with this particular stove. There's a chart on the back that tells you how far it has to be from combustibles. And I meet my 18 inch requirement uh, for the single wall stove pipe um, away from these walls. So that's why I don't have any metal back here is because I don't really need it. But I'm going to put some um, around the wood stove eventually. I don't think I'm going to do it today, um, but I will get some behind this one. And also too with this moss chinking, um, it's in there really tight, uh, but the last thing you want is you know like moss coming out and falling on the on the stove of course. So uh, that metal will kind of keep that, you know if any does fall out it'll fall between the heat shield and the, the wall and not onto the stove. Okay. You think you're helping, Skeeter? So I'm going to cut a piece of metal. This will be what the stove sits on. Okay. All right, well, I got my metal cut. So now, we will Well, that was pretty quick and easy. Um, only thing I have to do is I just got to screw these legs down into the floor. That way this thing can't move around um, on the metal. But I don't have my screw gun here, so um, I'll just bring that next time and tack this thing to the floor. That way it can't move around. But this stove comes from Northwoods Fabrication. I've showed this stove before. And Northwoods Fabrication is a Minnesota company owned by a guy named David. And he makes these stoves. And um, like I've said, you can't, you can't find stoves like this in box stores. You know, they're made in the USA. Uh, this is the perfect wood stove, in my opinion. Um, I pick, I got another one that I'm going to use in my wall tent, um, a different one from him that's a little bit more lightweight. Uh, but he makes, yeah, all different sizes, different models, some with glass fronts, some without. So if you have a cabin or a camper, a tiny house, wall tent, whatever, uh, he'll have a stove for you. But I'll put a link in the description, and that will direct you to his, his site, and you guys can check him out. Um, but yeah, like I said, you can't, you can't beat these steel plate, uh, wood stoves. You just can't. Um, and this is the fourth wood stove I've had here now. I've used a lot of wood stoves, uh, different kinds. Um, the modern ones I've made my own and for the price, um, of these and how well they're made and the fact that he's a Minnesota guy, you know, made the USA, you, you can't really beat these. So, um, I'm excited to use this thing in the cabin. I might even fire it up tomorrow morning cause it was a little chilly this morning in here. So um, I might fire this thing up for the first time tomorrow morning, but anyways, I'm excited to, to use this thing this winter. Well, it is uh, dinner time, so I'm having um, some leftovers. We have, this is uh, venison pasta that Sierra made. Sauce is homemade, everything's homemade. And we're kind of eating up the last of our venison. We just have a couple packs of ground venison left because bow season starts on Saturday and we're hoping to get a new uh or restock the freezer in the next week or two here it'd be nice and then we can have venison steaks and back straps and all that again some of you guys were talking about this stove and how it's pretty close to flammables here in my last video um 
this really, it's, it, it was close before, but now that I have the moss chinking, um, definitely want to do something different here. But I'm actually going to move this entire uh, counter over. It's just screwed into the ground in a couple places and to the wall. So it'll be easy enough to move over and there's room to move it over. And then that will give me a little bit more space so it's not so tight here. And then I will put uh, metal um, at least on the log walls. I'm not too worried about this one, um, but we'll get metal uh, on the walls. That way we don't have any issues. The stove, of course, is not too big of a deal, but with these old um, ovens, like when you're running the oven, the sides do get pretty hot. There's dinner. Venison pasta. Well, I'm going to sit here in my little happy place and enjoy the sunset. Um, tomorrow, it's going to be kind of mainly inside stuff. I'll finish up this canvas and then um, I brought some tan caulk. I need, I need to caulk some, some really small spots that I couldn't get. Uh, moss in just around the door frame um, and the windows in a couple spots, but um, That'll pre pretty much be it because tomorrow it's supposed to rain hard all day So we'll pretty much be stuck in here, but I got everything done outside that I wanted to so I'm feeling pretty good So far this thing's uh, ready for ready for hunting camp Well, it's about 10 a.m. now and it's been raining pretty much all morning, but the porch is working. It's been nice kind of standing out here just watching the rain and staying dry. So I'm already enjoying and loving the porch. Okay, here's what I got going on. I got just this last one left and it looks like it's going to come out. Hopefully it comes out perfect right there so I don't have to do any cutting, but we will see. Yeah, I got it all nailed to the ridge beam. So now I just gotta fold this back and tack it up. All right, folks, the canvas ceiling is completed. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. It's been pretty dark out all day since it's been raining, but I think it looks a lot better than what it did before. It was easy enough to carry in and not too bad to install, so I'm a pretty big fan of it. For dinner tonight, it is camp chow, cheddar beef goulash. These are nice because all you do is add wa uh, boiling water to them. And Sierra and I like to get one or two of these for our Boundary Waters trips just because they're kind of quick and easy if you're tired and put on a lot of miles, at, you know, in one day. Then, you know, you just got to heat up water and throw it in the bag and dinner is served. So, um, but we had some left over because we didn't get to go on our um, last couple trips this summer that we had planned because of Sierra's injury. So I'm just going to eat them up here. And they're not too bad. Some are better than others. I've never had this kind yet, though. And here it is. It's a little runny, but that's dinner. You're crazy, kitty.
Well, I'm all packed up. Kind of a nice little thunderstorm overnight. Pretty windy, a lot of rain. I'm trying to organize everything so I can just single carry out of here and don't have to double back for anything. But here is the inside update. So everything's uh, getting pretty dialed in here. Canvas is all done. Moss chinking is complete. Swapped out the wood stove. We got a little loft. I do need to reinforce that a little bit though. Um, but yeah, I'll have to carry in some boards next time I come. But yeah, this thing's ready to go for hunting season, which is tomorrow. We'll bow hunt around our main off-grid cabin for deer and then grouse hunt here. And we're gonna muzzle load hunt out here in December um, for white-tailed deer, but the deer hunting is quite a bit better um, around our other cabin, so that's where we'll be, we'll be bow hunting anyways. So looking ahead, um, Sierra and I will be pretty much bow hunting for white-tailed deer the rest of September. Um, and then once October comes, we'll be here quite a bit grouse hunting um, because by then, you know, the leaves are all on the ground. It's pretty tough to grouse hunt when everything's in full bloom still. Um, so once once we get into October, all the all the leaves will be gone and you can see a lot better and you got a much better chance at getting birds. So um, that's the plan. We'll be here a lot in October. And then um, pretty much right after rifle season in November, rifle season for deer, uh, mid-November is when we'll kind of be out here primarily. Um, so that's, uh, that's what you can look forward to, uh, going, going, uh, ahead here. Anyways, um, I appreciate you guys watching this video. I'm gonna head on out of here. Hopefully I can single carry all this stuff back to the car because I really don't want to have to double back in the rain. But anyways, I'll see you guys on the next video and I appreciate you guys watching. Until next time. Kitty, you ready to go home, kitty? Nice kitty. <laughs>